Hey guys, welcome to part one of a two-part series that I'm going to do on artificial insemination of pigs. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you know that Big Marie, my guilt, uh, is in heat this week and she is due to be bred. So we're really excited about it and uh, I actually am very, very happy uh, about how many people are so excited about it and interested in it. And pigs are awesome. I know pigs are, you know, kind of a topic where you're either in love with them or you absolutely hate them. We happen to be uh, the type of people that love them. We just think that they're awesome animals. And it's really sad that there is no information out there on them. Uh, chicken books, uh, chicken blogs, chicken articles, they are a dime a dozen. And pigs are just not really talked about that much. So it was really frustrating. For me, trying to learn as much as I could about artificial insemination, how it works, um, and it made me really realize that there's just nothing out there. So I was like, okay, I'm going to document this process. I am going to put the information out there, and hopefully I could help somebody who is wanting to learn as well. So first things first, uh, real quick, we should just touch base on the heat cycle with pigs. Pigs go into heat every 18 to 21 days. And during their heat cycle, um, there are different phases of it. At the beginning, uh, they get very swollen, they get a little discharge, and then at the end of the heat cycle, that is what is called standing heat. Standing heat can last from a day to two days, and at that point, the pig will quite literally stand still, statue, I could sit on Big Marie's back and do cartwheels, backflips, you know, pound on her butt, whatever, and she's not moving for anything. And the reason why that happens is because she would be literally standing still for a boar so that he could do his business. Now, we don't have a boar, so I have to be the boar in this case and artificially inseminate her. So. I have been watching her like a hawk, tracking her schedule, and I know that she is going to come into standing heat either this Thursday, which is tomorrow, or Friday. Knowing that, I contacted my uh, provider of sperm, which in this case, we use Shipley Swine Genetics. They're an awesome, awesome company out of Ohio. They've answered like 8,000 of my questions that I know that they get asked a million times a day and they've just been a really great resource for me, helping me with getting her weight under control and uh, things like that. So I highly, highly recommend them. Um, if you're not looking to spend a ton of money, look into their overruns and also look into their pick your breed dose, which is what we did. Um, because Big Marie uh, is a little overweight still and she's actually a little bit old uh, to be having her first litter, we didn't want to go and spend a ton of money on uh, sperm and have it not take. So we did the pick your breed where we picked Berkshire and they sent us, uh, you know, whatever they had extra of and we ended up getting pretty lucky and we got Kahuna who is one of their top boars. So your sperm, you order it, okay? So you call, you order, you get your doses. In our case, we got three doses because it's not just a one-time thing. You wanna give it to them over their standing heat cycle because what happens is they drop their eggs from one ovary and then out 12 to 24 hours later, they'll drop from the other. So you wanna hit both drops, that way you are going to be getting a larger litter. So when you do order it, it's going to come in a bottle just like this, and this bottle has four billion, with a B, swimmers in it. And it's also mixed with an extender, which is, for lack of a better word, food for the sperm. And what that does is it allows it to be viable for longer. So, you know, I ordered it on Monday, it got here on Tuesday. And if I keep it in the proper conditions, which is dark room between 60 and 68 degrees. So I have it sitting in my basement that is currently 63.5 degrees. And it will stay viable for seven to 10 days at least. And in some cases, even longer. 
So like I said, I ordered it on Monday because they do their collections Mondays and Thursdays. Ordered it Monday, got it Tuesday, and it's been sitting in my basement uh, ever since waiting for her to go into standing heat. The only thing that you have to do is you want to make sure that you rotate it every 12 hours. So it's just a matter of turning it over every 12 hours. And the reason that you want to do that is because the sperm will actually settle and separate from the extender and uh, you want to turn it so that the extender redistributes with the sperm allowing the sperm to continue to feed and keep it strong and healthy and good to go for when you need it. So the other thing that we got uh, is it's this called Hogmate and it is a pheromone bore odor spray because we do not have a bore this is the whole point of us doing artificial insemination. Uh, there isn't a male around who can really get her juices going and get her excited and help kick her into heat. So this is a pheromone spray that you spray onto her nostrils and it will help um, stimulate the onset of heat and also give her a stronger heat cycle. So knowing that she is going to be going into standing heat Thursday night to Friday morning. I started giving her uh, sprays of this on Tuesday and that will just help, like I said, bring on heat and give her a stronger heat cycle. The other thing that you need uh, for artificial insemination is your catheter. So you have to apply the sperm somehow and there really are two main types. One is a spiral tip catheter, which is what I uh, went with, and the second is a foam tip catheter. Now, the reason why this is spiral is because a pig's cervix is spiral, and uh, you need to literally sc it screws in. Um, and yes, a boar's penis does have a corkscrew tip at the end, and that will essentially screw in her cervix, she clamps down on it, and you know that you're in there because you could actually give it a little tug and it's not going to go anywhere. And then that's when you know that you're in the right place and that's when you attach the bottle to the end and you start to apply your dose. The reason why I went with the corkscrew over the foam tip, because Shipley's actually does sell the foam tip catheters, uh, the reason why I did that was because everybody started with the, the corkscrew ones, the spiral tip ones, and uh, for me, I feel more comfortable with that because I will know for sure that I'm in the right place when I can really feel her clamp down on it. I got these from QC Supply. They are disposable and they're very cheap. Um, this whole bag, which has, I don't know, 20 of them maybe, uh, was 10 bucks. So I'm gonna be set for a long time. And the last thing is you wanna make sure that you do have a lube. Now, they say that with the spiral tip ones that you don't need it, um, that with the foam tip ones you do, but I have some on hand anyway, uh, just as part of my vet kit. And um, if I do need to use it, or in the situation with the foam tips, and you do have to use them, you wanna just make sure that, number one, you apply it in the right place. So you don't wanna ever put it on the tip because there's actually a hole here at the end, and that is how the sperm will get into her. Uh, so you don't want to plug that. Um, you want to just put it around the edges. Same with the foam tip. It's going to have the hole at the end. You want to make sure that you put the lube around it. But number two, definitely have to make sure that you have non-spermicidal lube. You don't want to be applying a lube that will kill the sperm that you paid for that you're trying to use to impregnate her. So that's basically the gist of it. I have all of my supplies. I have my boar scent that I've already been applying um, for a couple of days. You have your sperm, which we have three doses that we will give her throughout the course of her standing heat cycle. You have your lube and you have your catheters. So now we're just on Big Marine Watch. I'm going out and checking on her every morning at lunch and in the evening when I feed her 
checking her uh, backside to see how she's looking and she's right on track and then I will really start watching her carefully tomorrow to see if she will stand for me and then the fun begins and part two.